Subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified about the highlights of India's smartest podcast, The Ranveer Show. This is TRS Clips. What's the spiritual significance of the sun and the moon, sir? And is there spiritual significance of the sun and the moon according to the scriptures? They have a significance in terms of their impact on human life. So, you know, from the point of view of astrology, all the planets, they have their impact. So the sun and the moon also have their impact. Now, for example, there are mood swings with the moon. Mm. So the mind has a very strong connection with the moon. Mm. And that's why the waxing and the waning moon does affect the mind. Mm. So likewise, if the sun dominates, it has its own uh, impacts, etc. So these impacts are more on the material side or on quasi-spirituality. So there's one quasi-spirituality which includes astrology, numerology, palmistry, etc. What is the meaning of the word quasi? Quasi means semi-spirituality. Okay. You know, but uh, if, we, if we go into pure spirituality, then you can rise beyond all of these. Mm. Because ultimately, our mind is our own possession. And things can influence it a little bit. But finally, what we choose to think in any situation is always a decision that we can make. Mm. So that is why a good spiritual practitioner would be one mm. who in negative situations under negative influences can still be perfectly calm perfectly peaceful and having holy thoughts residing within that's what we should strive for you know there's this very interesting part of the autobiography of a yogi that um, talks about astrology and the nature of it where yogananand paramanji explains astrology in detail he's also who i consider to be my guru so again, I've I, read the book. Okay, I'm sure you have, sir. Um, he he explains astrology from the perspective of, for lack of a better word, I think spiritual vibrations or electromagnetic vibrations. He says that especially the planets in our solar system and our solar system in general uh, gives out a certain amount of uh, electromagnetic radiation. In the same way that uh, light has dual nature where you have photons as well as waves uh, every object in the world has a certain amount of energy that it's always emitting. Like these cups of coffee or the coffee itself has a kind of energy it's emitting. And the larger the object, the larger the energy that it's uh, emitting. So say a planet like Saturn, which is so big, or a planet like Jupiter, which is so big. Imagine the heap of energy that it is emitting. Or even the moon by itself, you know, which is so close to the Earth. The energy that's emitting. Or the sun and the energy that's emitting. These are the energies that um, can affect human beings based on their own past karma, their own sanskars. Uh, and then he goes on to say that the moment you go into deep meditative practice and spiritual practices and you keep making your inner core stronger, like in the world of weight training and the world of sports, we keep talking about core strength because whether you're throwing a punch or kicking a ball, it's about core strength. Similarly, in, in the world of spiritualism, um, your core strength is how much you meditate, how strong is your faith, how strong is your bhakti, how good are you as a person. The stronger your core, the lesser you get affected by those energies. And the more you get carried by the goodness of the universe. But, uh, sir, in this whole paragraph, would you like to add anything that I've missed out on? So when we talk about core strength in spirituality, it is our control over the mind. This mind is the most important aspect of our personality. And is the mind what gets affected by those energies of the planets? That's right. Okay. See, happiness and distress is not a consequence of the circumstances around us, mm. but a consequence of the state of our mind. So the Western philosopher John Milton, he put it so well. He said, the mind is a place of its own and can make happen a heaven out of hell and hell out of heaven. You know, so we are always focused on changing our circumstances. I want to move to a better place. I want to have more opulences in the hope that the circumstances will give us happiness within. 
But spirituality teaches us that your inner state is more important than the outside. And if you can fix that, you can be happy wherever. And that is why the Bhagavad Gita is spoken on a battlefield. Now that is the worst situation of this material realm. You can't go worse than a battleground. You know, everything is agitated and disturbed. And even there, Lord Krishna tells Arjun, you can be perfectly calm and peaceful. So the message is so strong that the real peace that you want is an inner state. And if you can make the core strong, that if you can learn the control of the mind, then you become insulated from the outsides. So a beautiful definition of yoga is given. Yogina karma kurvanti sangam tyaktvatma shuddhe. A yogi is one who is doing worldly works. The yogi may be a king. There were so many kings in the past. Maybe an administrator, maybe anybody is doing all the worldly works, but is still completely calm and peaceful. So for that, we need to learn the science and the art of mind management. Mm. But that is what spiritual teachers like Swami Yogananda were teaching us. Mm. And, you know, I think that mind management and mind balancing happens from the world of yoga. And again, when I'm saying yoga, I don't mean just the asanas. It's the eightfold path, which possibly begins with the physical, which are the asanas and then heads into meditation and your thought processes. Mm -hmm.